Hey folks, welcome to another numeracy video. In this video, we're going to be looking at how to split a number given a ratio. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, so looking at question one here, what we've been asked to do is divide $80 in the ratio of three to five. Now I'm going to show you folks a couple of methods of doing this. Um, and of course, from question two onwards, I'm probably going to do the quicker method. So if we think about it like this, we've got three to five. So I'm going to turn the three into three boxes and the five into five red boxes. And if you think about it like this, this entire part from all the way from here to here is actually worth 80. And if you count the number of boxes that we have, we've actually got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We've got eight boxes and they add up to 80. So each of those boxes can be figured out by doing 80 uh, divided by eight, which is equal to 10. So that basically means each of these boxes are actually worth 10. And because in the blue section, we've got three blue boxes. So that's gonna be three times 10, which is equal to 30. And as for the red one, we've got five. So five times 10 is going to be 50. And if you look at the end answer, we've got 30 plus 50, which equals to 80. So we know we've done the right thing. Now, of course, you don't want to be sitting there drawing boxes, you know, during your exam. What you want to do is a quicker method. And the way we're going to do this is I'm going to show you a second method here is we're going to look at the total number of parts. Now, in the previous video in this particular playlist, we talked about ratios written as fractions. So the three part so we can kind of see it as we've got eight parts in total. So we've got three out of eight, and then we've got five out of eight. So those are the two parts that we're looking at. Now three out of eight is a fraction. So we want to know three out of eight, three over eight times 80, what that's, what's that going to be? And five over eight times 80. And I'm going to kind of split this up here so you can kind of see what's happening here. Now 80 and eight, they kind of cancel out each other. So, well, that goes to one that becomes 10 and what we left with three times 10 which equals to 30 and once again on the other side we can see 8 and 80 that that's going to be replaced with 10 and 1 and we've got 5 times 10 which equals to 50 and as you can see I've pretty much done the same thing uh, what I did with the diagrams but it, I've just done it in a much quicker way with using fractions so let's try that with question 2 so question 2 I've got 2 to 3 so all, all together, I've got five. So two out of five multiplied by 100 as one part of it. And then three out of five multiplied by 100 as the, um, the second part of it. So if you look at this one, what I could do is, I mean, I could just uh, do this manually or I could show you how to do this in the calculator as well. In the calculator, I've got two over five multiplied by 100, making sure that the 100 comes at the right spot. And as you can see, I'm getting 40. And then 3 over 5. I'm going to be lazy here. Let's see if I can just get rid of that and put the three Fs I can. There we go. 3 over 5 is going to be 60. And a good way to check your answer, whether you're correct, is when you add your final two answers that you, after you split it, they have to add up to the total you started with. So if you look at it, 40 plus 60 is 100. Now that gives me confidence that I've actually done this right. There's one more thing to kind of check as well. Now, if you actually put 40 over 60 as a fraction, then you can kind of see that you could divide by 20 on both the numerator and denominator. And what you should end up with two to three, which is actually the original ratio. So that's another way to check whether you've done this question correctly or not. So how about question three? We've got $50 and one to two. Now, in this case, uh, sometimes the numbers don't work out very nice. Sometimes the numbers are going to be ugly. And this happens to be one of those situations. So we've got one to two. That means one out of three, because three parts in total, times 50. And then we've got two out of three times 50. And so again, I'm just going to put this in the calculator. So I've got one over three multiplied by 50, which is going to give me a recurring decimal. So at this point, I'm going to put this as 16.67 and two thirds of 50 is going to give me this 
and I'm going to have to put it at 33.33. Now, theoretically, when you use decimals, um, this is not in the perfect, uh, what do you call it, ratio. Um, it's just something that, that you need to be mindful of. Um, but if you leave your answer in fractions, then of course it's going to be in, um, it's the appropriate ratio. So if you look at it like this should have been 100 over three, and the other one should be 50 over three. But anyway, when it comes to money, we are always after round. So it's always going to be, um, you're gonna have like someone with one cent extra possibly somewhere. What about question four? How about you folks have a try with this question? Um, and then I'll go through it and I'll pause the video. Pause the video, try the question, and then I'll go through the answers. Hopefully you had a chance to do that. Uh, so what we've got is we've got seven parts in total. So that's three out of seven. And then we've got four parts on this side. We're going to multiply by 120 and 120 for both sides. So we got three out of seven and we're doing multiplied by 120 and that's giving us this ugly number which is 51.43 i wanted two decimal places because i'm dealing with money here and four sevenths so if i wanted four sevenths going up went too far okay let's try this four sevenths is going to give me 480 over seven which is roughly 68.57 uh, and what I could do is I could actually test these numbers out so I could go 68.57 uh, plus 51.43 now this should give me a hundred and twenty dollars um, and there you go in this case it actually works out um, but again like I said it's just something to be mindful of with recurring decimals uh, or like recurring numbers is that you know when you round it up you might be one cent off with your calculations but that's okay it shouldn't be too much of a of a hassle but anyway folks that pretty much covers any time you want to split a particular um, number in um, in a different ratio all right folks that is basically it for this video as always don't forget to like this video share this video and subscribe to keep up with the latest content now there should be a couple of playlists popping up here and here great material for revision and as always thank you for watching